All right, everyone, it has been at least, I don't know, probably June of of this year, at the end of June, that I actually did my last episode, which was about the Oscars, and there's a really good reason for that, um, and I will actually will tell you about my personal life after I actually do this episode and moving forward. I just want to say um, thank you very much for tuning in and thank you for being patient with me. I know for a fact that there are a lot of things that were definitely out of my control and I just want to apologize. And I will let you guys know very, really shortly. And I wish for a fact that, I mean, my whole life was was better, but it turns out that it's definitely not. So, um Right now, I'm just pretty much getting occupied on just doing things, making sure that I don't fall off the deep end, and trying to, I don't know, trying to actually keep myself sane in this fucking insane world. So, I will let you guys know about what's happening. I'll give you the short story. But I just want to go ahead and talk about the Tokyo Game Show. And it turns out that the Tokyo Game Show, as I heard, which is going to be live maybe around uh, September 20, 20, uh, I'm sorry, September 21st, which is probably going to be um, around my time period, is going to be maybe 9 o'clock at the East Coast. Yeah, 9 o'clock at the East Coast. So, so they're doing the Tokyo Game Show, and I'll be actually covering all the all the big big news of the Tokyo Game Show, and I feel like it's just a a really great thing to just to come back to and to actually come back to all of this. And um, I'm, I'm thinking about actually streaming uh, Final Fantasy 16. I'm thinking about streaming uh, Final Fantasy 7 Remake as well because now Rebirth is just around the corner. As we all heard, uh, Rebirth is going to be dropped at 2024. So that's some big news right there, right right off the gate. And we're probably going to have more news about Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth. And a lot of uh, other other games so far, and uh, there's there's a lot of notable showcases that I just want to give a quick uh, glimpse over, and I'm definitely going to be looking out for them. So according to uh, SportsKita.com, there's actually a uh, a small short list of games, or should or should I say, gaming companies in general, and uh, and I'll be quoting on on their. Uh, on their article and it says here that there's a lot of notable showcases and and like I said before it's actually a short list because what the Tokyo Game Show do is they 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 literally focus mainly on the Japanese developers nothing else that's why it was and that's why it's always called the Tokyo Game Show it's not GamesCon uh, it's not uh, Jeff Keighley's uh, Pride and Joy, which is the, the Game Awards and stuff like that. It's just strictly on the on one on one country, which is the Japanese developers. So let's go ahead and talk about Microsoft. And I know for a fact that Microsoft is like literally a a, a small pond out there. The marketing. Or should I say the market value in in Japan is is actually kind of uh, trickling down. I mean, it hasn't really been that good. It hasn't really been that that strong, all because that Microsoft is actually a United States based company and is natively in the United States. They tried to make a huge splash in the J- Japanese market, and it kind of ultimately failed. Not once, not twice, but three times already. So, yeah, even though that with the max success of Starfield, which, I mean, I'll probably will talk about that um, maybe next week. 
I haven't played the game yet um, because uh, I don't have an Xbox, but I do. But 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 I can get an Xbox Game Pass and play it on my PC, which I think that was literally what they should be doing in the, in the first place. Is like. <clears throat> You might as well just go ahead and just abandon the whole entire Xbox thing and just focus on PC games because that's exactly what people are are just pretty much doing right now. Like, because let's just be honest with you. If you're actually a streamer, right, if you're actually a streamer and you actually have a souped up PC, then you don't really need an Xbox. And nowadays there's computer parts that are dirt, dirt ass cheap. Buy yourself all the the computer components and build it yourself. You can literally go online and have a step by step tutorial to build your own PC. So you don't really need an Xbox. Literally, you do not need an Xbox. You can literally kill two birds with one stone. Have a souped up PC for 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 browsing and do whatever you want to do with it, and you can also play games. And that's. I think that's what they wanted to do three or four years ago. And I think it just, it was just like kind of handled it. Uh, that I guess they actually handled it a little bit, bit bad, but it looks like to me that they kind of actually, um, got on that, that wagon and all that other stuff by actually doing the next best thing is literally open up their checkbook and buying everything, <laughs> which, um, I guess you can say that, yes, uh, Bethesda, I mean, buying Bethesda looks a lot like it was, it was a smart deal because after Fallout 76, it looked like it was uh, a chicken shit show. Like, now with the financial backing of Microsoft, they can do something like Starfield, which it's a win-win for both, uh, uh, fuck, what's the word? On on, on on both ends, on, on both uh, teams. I'm sorry, I'm I'm just a bit a bit tired today. Forgive me. But yes, uh, it turns out that you know Tango GameWorks. That's definitely going to be on on the radar. You know, with High Fi Rush and Ghostwire Tokyo being a success as well on their platform. So that's actually. Uh, the the whole entire motivation of them is actually pretty going on their on their end and plus um Microsoft Bl- I'm sorry uh, Activision Blizzard um I guess we could say it's under the Microsoft umbrella now which I don't think that it's actually a huge loss because guess what if you have a PC you could actually play all of the Xbox games on your PC, so it's not really a uh, a huge loss. I'm not crying over it. I know a lot of people are the the marginalized uh, fan bases, all of ten to twenty thousand that are that are on Twitter just screaming that they're that they're, they're fucking heads off. Which I mean, for the record, I think it actually proves to me that Twitter is a cesspool of ideas and. That's the reason why nobody can't have fun anymore when it comes to just video gaming in general. You know, I video game because it's a fun hobby. It takes my mind off of things, but I have been extremely busy on a lot of things as of late and I just couldn't can game as I shoot as I used to. But I am slowly uh, getting over everything else that's happening in my life. So that's that. I'll let you know right after this this episode's over. Now, moving on, uh, 505 Games. Uh, I don't really know much about it. I mean, I know for a fact that they, they showcase a number of titles. Yeah, you know, like Cloud Punk and Gunfire Reborn and stuff like that. So, so you could say that they're actually like a mid, a like a, a mid size lower to 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 mid size gaming publishers. I mean, they don't do really single like do like single A or or double A titles. Nothing really actually kind of like stuck out to me. But the beautiful thing about 
gaming companies like 505 Games is like they can like literally do five or six or seven video games and have a number of 20 to 25 people or even 50 people actually working on one game and have 20 to 25 people working on another. So that's actually very good on their part. Also, uh, Sega, Sega slash Atlas. Now, there says here that the Sega is holding a joining show with its subsidiary, Atlas, which I just heard that uh, Atlas actually got bought up by Sega, which that's actually a nice little uh, coup for them. So they're doing a lot of Persona stuff. They're doing Persona 3 Reloaded, and they're doing Persona 5 Tactica. You know, all I gotta say is smoke it when you got them if you got Persona stuff. Um... And like I said before, like, yeah, I mean, Persona is very popular, but I mean, many people are saying that, well, uh, Persona is the, the new king of Japanese RPGs, which I never really got into that argument because let's just be honest with you. I mean, like, it's just apples and oranges and pears and grapes and strawberries at this point that, yeah, they're, they're all fruits, but they're, but they're all different. Some people are going to, going to like, like they're the strawberries. Some people are going to like their oranges or some people are going to like both. And you can like both. So that's just it to me. Um, so you can literally expect a lot of Persona shit. Um, Sonic the Hedgehog, you could probably... Yeah, that's Sonic Superstar. You know, like like a dragon, Gaiden. The man who erased his name. So that's going to be, be a thing right there. Then we have Tecmo Games, which I am really surprised that they literally dropped their cash cow, which was Dead or Alive. And, that, and, that, and that's really crazy, don't you think? I mean, it, I mean it, it, it really is, because if you actually think about it, and if you really do think about it, and just, I mean, if you just actually think about it, I'll just actually fix my chair a little bit. Because if you actually like truly think about it, like DOA six was okay. I mean, I think they tried to do do a story. I think they tried to do their best to uh, to wrap that whole entire thing up. But after that whole entire thing ended with that storyline, it felt like that was it. So I I heard that DOA seven has shelved permanently. So that means one thing: they went to the ways of the dodo. And now they're doing more things with it. And and you see it clearly since, you know, they're, they're working with Square Enix and we'll, we'll to talk about them. I mean, they actually made a Final Fantasy Origins game, which I do feel that it's actually pretty good. It's pretty good. It's like it's like Neo with Final Fantasy shit. It's awesome. You know, take the stick out of your ass and just play the fucking game. I mean that 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 I mean uh, that's that's all I can say. Like, but people like, but I, it's like I said before, I man. A lot a lot of video game fans out there are just so so snobbish. Like, I don't get it. Just have fun, you know. And I guess it's not a seventy dollar investment. It's just it's just seventy bucks that you're willing to actually spend on something. If you don't like it. Just go ahead and take it back. But yeah, they have uh, Romance of the Three Kingdoms 8 remake. They have Fate Sam Samurai Remnant. They also have a suspected showcase of Wo Long Fallen Dynasty with DLCs uh, Volume uh, 2, I believe, with Conqueror of uh, Jian Dong. Sorry if I got that wrong. But I heard that game is is fucking fucking phenomenal. Which we gotta get that game. We gotta get that game, and we just gotta play it. Now, hopefully, I'll uh, I'll get that game uh, during a holiday season, because I've always felt like that game is a holiday season game anyway. Like most like most games. So. Um, Capcom, they're going to expand on 
the Resident Evil 2 remake. They're going to make s separate ways DLC. And then VR mode for Resident Evil 4 remake. Then they're going to do Dragon's Dogma. And then there's a lot more on Street Fighter 6, of course. I heard that is done exceedingly well, both critically and and uh, it's uh, sold a lot, a lot of copies. It's it sold a lot of fucking copies. I, I heard that it sold is it's actually on top of of the sales of the sales charts when it comes to Street Fighter games in general. It has sold more than maybe two, probably three million. Let me look that up. Real quick. Okay, 2 million copies. Street Fighter 6 is experiencing steady growth. According to Capcom, Street Fighter has officially hit 2 million copies since its launch. And I stand corrected. Street Fighter 2 became the best selling game since the golden age of the arcade video games. So, Street Fighter 2 is always going to be on top. Why? Because they actually relaunched it over and over and over and over again with different characters and different mechanics, which that's pretty much expected. But, you know, Street Fighter VI, in a nutshell, is pretty damn good. It's pretty damn good. I actually played a couple of... Uh... <sighs> I'm sorry. I played a couple of hours of it, and it's just amazing. But then again, now I have Mortal Kombat uh, 1 to look forward to. So now I'm going to have to alternate my time doing that as well. So then there's uh, the Yoho verse. Uh, Genshin Impact and Honoka Star Rail. All right, and then we gonna go with Square. No, I'm not gonna gonna go ahead and and cover that shit. I'm not. I'm not. A gotcha waifu husbando game. That's not me. That's not a game. I'm sorry. Now let's move on to uh, Square Enix. Everybody's pride and joy in a Tokyo Game Show. But like I said before, they have a couple of games lined up. They have Final Fantasy VII Rebirth on one side. And then they have Final Fantasy XIV Online on the other. So that's going to be their big one-two punch. Also, they have games like Foam Stars, which is actually like Splatoon, but with uh, foam. If you like foam. I heard they're going to drop an open beta real soon. Then there's something called Infinity Strash Dragon Quest, The Adventures of Die. And then also Dragon Quest Monsters, The Dark Prince. So, so there you go. You got, you got Final Fantasy on one hand and then you got Dragon Quest on the other. So that's going to be a strong show for them. And also everything in between, which... I heard for a fact that they're saying that they're going to move away from like the little projects and stuff like that and focus on triple A games, which I wonder what that will really say about all the other games like, I don't know, uh, Demontoid's uh, Life is Strange and what else like, and I know for a fact that they want to go ahead and make more games that are Western RPGs and stuff like that. But in the same time, they actually sold off uh, all the, the Edo stuff in the Edo's Montreal, and they actually gave it to the Saudis. So, I guess what they, 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 what they wanted to do is that they actually focused on what they, they actually want from the Western market and want to actually make a a huge presence of that. But in the same time, they want something that is internal. So that's something like that. I mean, that's something that it's uh, probably going to uh, happen real soon. But 
with the success of Final Fantasy 16 and the uh, intermediate success of, of all the other games, you know, I, I really do feel that they might end up actually expanding once again. And it's going to be it internally. I do, I do feel, feel that way. So if I'm actually grading what I'm, what I'm actually looking forward to out, out of this lot, it's going to be three things. One is going to be Square Enix, of course. Everybody's, going to, everybody's now talking about Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Everybody's talking about Final Fantasy XIV Online. Yoshi P is probably in heaven right now. He has he has Final Fantasy XVI, and now he has Final Fantasy XIV Online. He, he he must feel like the man right now. Now, of course, there's a lot of you know, kind of omissions and stuff like that. People have their own bingo boards. Me, personally, I don't really hold my breath. But let's just go ahead and just announce the white elephant in the room, and that is Kingdom Hearts 4. I know for a fact that Kingdom Hearts 4 is probably going to be mentioned and is going to be talked about because they just announced the game about two years ago. And according to sources, that this game was actually being developed right alongside Final Fantasy 16. And guess what? Final Fantasy 16 just came out just a few months ago. Next year, around March, Final Fantasy 7 Remake is going to be released. Then there's going to be some DLC, I believe, for Final Fantasy 16. So of course, when you have that time period, it's actually a nine month period where everything is just open, is wide open. And it might be a long shot, but I'm going to say it anyway, because for all we know, uh, Capcom might end up saying, hey, we're going to do Resident Evil 9. Boom. And that's going to be around the holiday season in 2024. Like, me personally, I say, let's take this back to 1997. Let's take this back to 1996 or 1998. Have Resident Evil and Kingdom Hearts. The one-two punch. Give us both around Christmas. Christmas of 2024. Let's do it. That's how, how I feel about this whole entire situation. I've always felt like there, there, there's always room for many games on my wall. That I could just go to and just play whenever I want. I mean, I just don't understand why... I have to play a video game um, when it's out like today or few few months from from now, and it feels old. No, fuck that. I mean, I, I'm I'm gonna play a game that I I want to buy, and when I am bored, I'll just go ahead and play it, which I do all my games. You know, I take my time with it. You know, I pay good money for these games, and uh, if I like something, I take my time with it. I mean, I don't got to rush and beat the game in seven fucking days. <laughs> I don't got that, that much free time. Shit. So, uh, it's, it's that. And plus, they have we have our five major games that are actually expected. And people are actually expecting right now. I mean, of course, people want to see Silent Hill 2. There's always been, there's actually a teaser trailer already. Who knows? Uh, who, who, who would have thought that, that Konami is making video games again? Awesome. And are people still going to be like, hashtag fuck Konami? You know, who knows at this point? Who really knows? Well, there's a shit ton of Silent Hill games that was literally announced last year 
there was there was Silent Hill Two, there was Silent Hill Townfall, there was Silent Hill F. I don't know what the fuck that means, but it's Silent Hill F. Then there's Silent Hill Ascension. So there's four fucking games. But then again, like we all know for a fact that these games have been in development. These the 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 whole entire franchise, or should I say, the intellectual property, has been spread out to other developers. So Konami has little to fuck all to do with do with the, like most of them because they don't know how to make games anymore. And Hideo Kojima is literally gone, and he's never going to be able to to work with Konami, no matter how much money they make. You know, that's that's just a fucked up thing. But yeah, it is what it is. Then is Resident Evil Mind. No, sorry, <laughs> Resident Evil Nine that I actually mentioned. You know, it's like in addition to Konami, which which now Capcom is actually scheduled to participate in this year's Tokyo show. And they have a lot of games coming out. They have Street Fighter VI, they have Exo Primal, which looks really promising. And they also have Resident Evil 9, which there, there's a lot of rumors where uh, we're probably going to go back up to the sticks. It's probably going to, they're, they're going to go up north. Many people are saying that it might be Claire Redfield. Many people say that it might be Mia Winters. Which, that would be something. Because Mia Winters have been in one game for like seven fucking minutes and then the other for, for like 12 minutes. If you're not a speedrunner. Which, it's like... She's li- like literally the most influential person. Like the, the she's like literally the the key of everything. Like she's so connected to everything. And there's little to to much. But to be honest with you, less is more. And I'm going to make a bold prediction that Mia Winters is going to be the lead in Resident Evil 9. She is. There's like literally a lot to unpack. And even though that we went, I don't know, maybe 16 years to the future with Rose Winters, which uh, I actually liked uh, the Village of Shadows uh DLC. I thought that was really, really unique. I like that. But a lot of people are saying that Ethan is not dead. Possibly. Possibly. But people want to see Chris Redfield or maybe even Claire Redfield. And then also there, there's Monster Hunter. Um, me personally, I, I actually had, uh, Monster Hunter Rise for the Switch and I didn't like how it played. So I was going to wait for the PlayStation 5 version, which I haven't really actually gotten yet. So I'm going to go ahead and get it. And I'm going to probably do Monster Hunter Mondays if uh, Monday Night Raw is still fucking stupid. Uh, whatever. But, I mean, I'm not going to hold my breath on another remake project because that's going to take another two or three years. And I know that's being... Uh, made right now. So that's something to look forward to. Then there's Metal Gear Solid Delta Snake Eater, which is another remake project. Um, it's literally a standout action game from the PlayStation 2 era. One, one of the, the, the best action games in the PlayStation 2 era. That's my, that's like literally my my opinion. 
but you know what? It's uh, I'm actually pretty much looking forward to it. I mean, I I I really am. It it, it looks nice. It, it looks really really nice. So I'm just hoping that we have all the original voice actors back, or are they going to use the intellectual property or stuff stuff like that? Because they they're known to do that. That if you actually have all the voice acting done, all you can do is just clean it up, remake the whole entire game, and then just reuse the voice acting. Tekken 8. If you like fighting games, are you sick of them now? Well, guess what, son, bitch? We literally got Tekken 8. Now, of course, um, this this game is kind of uh, different, you know? It's kind of different. I mean, I, I expect it from Street Fighter. I expect it from Mortal Kombat. But Tekken 8, or should I say Tekken in general, they haven't really made that many uh, new mechanics and I'm like, wow, I'm just a bit kind of uh, taken back here. You know, it's uh, it's more action oriented. So, uh, yeah, yeah. It's always going to have have the, that that mixed bag of robust characters that you just love. You know, it, it's 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 just like, it's one of those games where there's not really a a tier list for anything. It's just that it's so aesthetically pleasing. It's like, wow, I want to play that guy or I want to play that girl. It's never really about, oh, this game or, or, or th- th- this character is going to uh, win, win the finals or whatever. It's just that whatever you feel comfortable with speaks about you a- as a player. That's just it. And the beautiful part is, is that there's no such thing as a bad character in Tekken. Like, you can try to find one, but you're always going to find a fan base for that character. It's just amazing. Amazing. And it's going to come out next year, January 26th. So that's going to be the first Triple Eight title to come out in 2024. So, kudos. Kudos. Then there's uh, Sonic Superstars. Well. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm a huge fan of Sonic. I, I really am. It's just that it's like, uh, okay. I mean, all right. I mean, it's it's fun. You know, it's that's all right. Like, I mean, it's. I heard that it's a is actually going to be a side scroll scrolling platform game. So it's going to be two point five D. Perspective. Okay, I mean I, I, that's all I gotta say. You know, it's like. I, I mean, I don't hate Sonic, but I'm not crazy about it either. It's just that, all right, it's it's just a game that I got on Sega, and it was this mascot, and then I just, I grew out of it. I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I just grew out of it. So out of the five upcoming uh, games that are coming out, Mine that, that's going to stick out the most is possibly going to be Resident Evil 9 because that's literally the inevitable. And there's going to be one on this list that I know for a fact, and yes, I'm going back to say it, is Kingdom Hearts 4. And even though that nothing is really announced, you know how Square Enix is. They keep something... I mean, something about them not leaking anything at all until we actually figure it out and understand it, bro, is amazing. 
is amazing. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to Resident Evil 9, and then I'm looking forward to Square Enix and Capcom, and also Tecmo Games. That's what I'm looking forward to tomorrow. And uh, also, I just want to go ahead and I, I don't want to bore anybody about my, my personal problems and stuff like that. But it turns out that both of my mom and my dad are, are not really in good shape. Um, I'm actually monitoring my mother's health. And as for my father, who I haven't spoken in seven to eight years, he was pretty much dead to me at this point. Um, just suffered a heart attack. And right now I'm just having a mixed emotions. I've been this bundle of nerves ever since 2023 started. And it's just never gone away. It, I just feel like I just want to go to sleep right now and not wake up. That's how I'm feeling right now. And it's it scares me. It bothers me. And also my job is is getting worse as it is. So that's where I'm at right now. And I apologize if I'm not doing this on a week to week basis. I want to, but I just don't have the energy or or the mood or the passion or the motivation to do anything other than just eat, sleep, drink alcohol, and just sleep. And uh, I know for a fact that it's not healthy for me to go go this way, but I'm the only one working in this household and I have to pull a nine to 10 hour shift just to make sure that I have enough money to get by. And it's, it's bothersome. So something really has to change fast. And that's, and that's about it. Um, I just want to say thank you very much for tuning in. And I know for a fact you're pretty much kind of sick and tired of me hearing this, but thank you for, for being uh, patient with me. It, it, it really It really helps. And uh, if you want to support me in any way, shape, or form, I do have a link tree. All the links are live right now. And I'm still writing. I'm still doing this podcast. Because at the end of the day, I'm just, I have to keep my mind, mind off of other things. I, I mean, I, I, I really do. So, I'm just going to end this this episode. So thank you very much for tuning in guys. Again, I know broken record. I'll see you guys later. Peace.